So, currently, as I um, get my room, my girl's room together before they come back home from Florida, I guess I could just talk this out really quick. Um, yeah, I think I'm starting to look like what I'm going through. And it's a bit challenging. It's stressful. It's a part of the healing process. And one thing I know is that, like, I can't... Um, I can't like avoid it anymore, you know, like trying to put on this facade of like everything is okay. And I'm learning how to deal with this situation. Um, yeah it's i'm going through a situation right now where like i'm being triggered and i'm learning to be aware of what triggers me that makes me um frustrated and it's always dealing with people and specifically people that um has always had a certain type of hold on me and i guess this will be a prime example or situation of strongholds um, and this is the part this is a, the part of the healing process that I'm going through um, and yeah so I think the part of my healing process that I'm going through right now is like um, getting over like codependency. And in the past, okay, so let me just give y'all a rundown of the situation that's happening right now. So my kids stayed in Florida. We went to Florida. Um, Uh, not last week, but the week before. And so I decided to let my kids stay in Florida with my parents. And so I was very hesitant about that, but I have my reasons why. And um, so here I am with a situation where they were supposed to be back because... There were certain engagements that the children had um, to attend with like friends and school and stuff because we have like um, pretty much two weeks before school starts on April 1st. So we're in preparation mode for that and so they were supposed to be back. So what I'm going through right now is the fact that I feel like things are out of my control. And so now that I feel like I've lost control, I've become a little frustrated because all the thoughts begin to rise up in my mind that, you know, Crystal, you should have did what you originally thought, which number one was don't leave them. <laughs> Second thing is that now they're not going to be back in time to attend their engagements. And one of them was really important for my son because as he goes into middle school, um, he's had something to go to where, you know, it helps him get acclimated to the school and um, things like that. And now he's going to miss it because of the situation and i was told one thing and then once you know i got back home the the word 
that was given to me was not kept um, of how things would go for them to get back home. And so now I feel like I have to um, do what the other party wants to do. And I'm very frustrated about it because it's just a lesson of like, Crystal, go with your first thought. So you're prepared to not deal with this particular situation in this way. And one of the things is like, one of my triggers is that, or the codependent tendencies, the people pleasing tendencies that I had is that, um, you know, you told me you were gonna do one thing and then you changed it after the agreement was made so now I have to compromise and I have to fit to what you want to do, which in return um, messes up what I had planned. And this has happened a lot in the past for me, so it sucks. And now I'm in a situation, if I could be completely transparent, honest, like, it has caused the frustration. The triggers have caused me to go back to some old ways and revisit some things that I would do in the past to cope with what I'm going through. And I don't like that. Oh, it's about to pour down outside. I don't like that because now I have to go back to, like, I feel like I'm... Well, my response to it was like a flight response. I didn't fight. So my flight response was to go back to the things that brought me comfort to deal with my situation. And I'm not gonna see what, say what those things are, but I really tried to fight it. And I should have seen this sign before I left Florida because it was coming up. And it was my old people pleasing tendencies of like, okay, you wanna do this, okay, I'll do it. I really don't want to, I want to say no, but because I don't want no for no uh, conflict, I'ma do what you desire to do instead of doing what I ultimately know I should be doing for myself and learning to say no. And obviously I wasn't strong enough in this situation and I should have seen it because it's been a gradual build. And this past week and a half or two weeks has felt like it's been two months um, because of how I've been dealing with situations. I've been avoiding a lot of things. I haven't been real with myself. I've been in denial. And then I find myself into people pleasing and I find myself compromising what I know I should be doing for myself. So then in the end, after it all has happened and I allowed myself to do what I ultimately do not want to do, then I feel powerless. I feel frustrated, I feel angry, and what I've learned now is that there's nothing that I can do to go back and change the decisions that I made, but moving forward, I know that, okay, Crystal, you're getting better. I'm learning to tell myself, you, okay, this is, you're getting better, you're aware, um, you can do something now before it spirals, and um, you can change it immediately. And my thought process also has to change. So in the past, if I fell into these situations and compromised and said yes to something I wanted to say no to, I, it would just keep going. Like it'll be an ongoing thing because I would feel like I don't, now I've gotten myself into it. I don't know how to get out of it. But now I'm just like, no, you know, I may have failed slightly but I see that so crystal what can you do to stop it in its tracks right now before it gets too deep for you dig a, a hole that's entirely too deep and you gotta fight to bring yourself back out of it and um I always say that I was in like a really deep hole in the past with my people pleasing, my codependency, which in the past I didn't know it was codependency, I didn't know it was people pleasing, and now I've been learning more about that. So the journey um, has not been easy, but because I'm so used to that, my brain 
is so used to that. Try, now I'm trying to purge all of that. I make a couple steps. Actually, I made strides forward. But as you're healing and going through a journey, there's always going to be a time where it's like, because you didn't face this part yet in your healing process, in your healing journey, you have to stop and you may find yourself go one or two steps back. But because I'm aware of what's going on in my journey right now, I was like, okay, Krista, you made two steps back. Let's not make it 10. Let's gain one of those steps back. Let's make that step forward. I got to pause y'all for my baby. Okay, so because, okay, so because I'm aware of the situation, I'm a little further in my healing process. I have learned that, oh, Crystal, you made two steps back. Let's stop right here. How can we gain one of those steps back? And y'all, that is so important. And what I'm, I have to learn how to do is say like, thank you, Lord. Um, let me give myself some praise because in the past, you know, I would belittle myself. I would feel like my self-worth was so low. And I will honestly say like the healing process can be very lonely. And because a part of that, the past for me was compromising, people pleasing, wanting approval of validation codependency um i would just fall into any relationship and honestly healing is can be one of is one of the loneliest journeys for me so although i am making steps and i see my growth it's also very lonely and that's how i make the one or two steps backwards because I, because of my loneliness, it's like if, if, if somebody wants me to do something that I don't want to do, I, and I find myself not longing for community and friendships, but I'm, I, I want that. I'm not going to say that I'm 100% ready for that because of my past, but because I still have a desire for that, but I'm patiently like waiting, you know, on God and doing what I need to do internally and allowing him to heal me and purge me and of all of these things, I am very cautious of let me not um, try to get into a relationship from this place that I'm in. So my prayer is always like, Lord, I desire relationship, but I desire whole and healthy relationship where I don't have to compromise. I don't have to people please. And y'all, that's going to be lonely for a while because as I'm being built up and healing and becoming strong and recovering who I am, who God created me to be, who I was before I got into all of that, it's very lonely. And so because of my loneliness in the in the moments that I'm in, I become very vulnerable and I d my strength just goes, you know, out of the window for a moment. And I'm just like, okay, I'll do that. If this is what you want to do for me to feel connection and wanted and validated and accepted, I'll do it. But that is so toxic. That is so toxic. And, um... I've fallen back into some things because of that, but I'm aware and I'm just like, okay, Chris, you still have time to stop it, but don't wait until it's too late. And then now you have to kind of really, I'm fighting, but I don't want to put myself in a position where I have to fight so much to get back out of it. I hope y'all get what I'm saying, but yeah. So just 30 45 minutes ago i was in that situation and i've actually been feeling this for the past few days and what makes me frustrated about it is that the people that i'm trying to that i'm dealing with in this particular situation they are not going to see me for this woman that i'm becoming they're not going to see me and the growth that i've uh, accomplished so far and there and, and a lot of the times what I've learned from reading about these different things is that they're not going to want to accept the new you 
um, because they're so used to you being this person that compromises and says yes, even though you want to say no, they, the, the person that is, you know, people pleasing. So they're used to the fact that, oh, you're going to please me anyway. You're going to do what I want you to do anyway. If I say it's going to go this way, you're going to do it anyway. So it doesn't matter. And this is why the journey becomes lonely very lonely because now not only do you um not only are you lonely but in a i guess in somewhat a healthy way for the moment because you're healing but you're lonely because the people that you depended on for your strength in a sense your um acceptance your validation um your uh your community you're letting them go too and you're not doing the things that you would usually do for them which was very toxic it was a toxic relationship a toxic exchange so it's lonely on that end because now in my loneliness i can't fall back on that i'm going forward so now the loneliness isn't going forward and getting over the bridge to the healthy relationships the whole relationships and learning to be accepted for who I really am not for the facade y'all I, I did all of that I put on a facade on social media and even as an entrepreneur and a mother and a wife and a daughter and a sister and a friend I put on a facade as if everything was okay only because I was a mess inside so I'm not living that facade anymore. I don't want to. So I'm just going through one of those good lonely moments, if you understand what I'm saying. Like God is definitely sending the people. He's, you know, I'm slowly, slowly but surely um, trying to get back into relationships with people because obviously we're not meant to be alone um but until i feel really comfortable with being in whole and healthy relationships not saying it's not comfortable it's uncomfortable for my sake because i'm not used to healthy and whole relationships i'm just used to toxic relationships in exchange and then and, and y'all this has been in all of my relationships with people like i sat for a moment today as i was frustrated and i said you know what this is just a part of the journey this is a part of what i've had to go through so i allowed myself to get emotional i allowed myself to process i allowed myself to feel the frustration and anger and then i said okay this is a part of it and this is what you're going to go through you're still healing, you're still learning, you're still growing. And when I do get in healthy and whole relationships with other people, I don't want to sabotage myself. Because in the past, when I did have somebody come along in my life that was healthy, they were whole, they knew who they were, they knew who they wanted, they were going through their healing process and they were accepting the things, but they were also ready for the new relationships, the new things I would run from those relationships because I just wasn't aware of what was going on at the time. I would run from those, sabotage myself, and allow these thoughts of like imposter, like they're going to see me for who I really am or because they're healthy and whole and they live a, a um, life that I desire. A lot of that was the fact that I didn't feel like I deserved that type of relationship. I also felt like, I mean, subconsciously, it was like, oh, they're not toxic. I don't know this situation. Why aren't they seeking after me? Why aren't they, um, why aren't they, you know, wanting me to do things? So when I came into these whole and healthy relationships, I would, my self-worth was so low that I would just give myself to them and say, hey, you want me to do this? You need me to do that? Or I only felt like I was worthy of healthy and whole relationships 
only if I was doing something for them and not getting anything in exchange. Like I felt inferior, like that was the inferiority that I was dealing with. And I felt like because they were living better than me, they were in their purpose, they were more successful, they were whole and healthy and they were confident in themselves that I didn't deserve to be on the same level with them. I only deserved to be down here like that and i automatically put myself in that situation because i didn't know how to be that person in exchange i'm like okay you got it all together you're doing this so let me what do you need from me let me give you something because i felt like that's all that i can give for them to accept me so that is where i am right now and i just needed to talk this journey out this situation out um and that's how i in all reality, that's how I get through my stuff. Yes. So I talk these, I, 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 pro, I finish the process of going through certain situations when I talk things out. So obviously I need to go back to therapy. <laughs> yeah. So that is where I am right now. I'm only ending this conversation right now because I got that much space, space in my phone. So. I hope this was, it helped somebody and stay tuned for more of my healing process. I'm going to be more real and more raw. So 